Well, hello, Alabaster. We are back with another update from our mayor. Mayor, I'm so glad that you have been meeting with us via Zoom and giving us updates from the city. I think it's really great. It just kind of all helps us feel a little bit more connected, even though we're all not connected right now physically. Yes, and you know, it's things are changing daily. Um, it's so uh, we actually do not know from day to day what's going to happen. So I'm really glad that we have this um, ability to keep keep people in the know of, of how things are changing. So thank you for doing it. So let's talk a little bit about the some changes to some city services that are happening. Give us some updates there. So, you know, we've said from the beginning that the city of Alabaster is open for business and we are. Um, we've had to adjust the way that we do things. And, and so as this has gone along, um, we've had to make some priorities, you know, really taking care of what we consider to be essential business. You've heard um, from the public safety, both chiefs are doing really good and keeping the, the community aware of what to expect from them, should you call 911 and need them. So I really appreciate them communicating that way. But we have other departments that are also considered essential. Um, our sewer and our sanitation departments are very essential. And so um, we want to thank those people for, you know, continuing to show up and do what they need for those essential services. And so in talking to our public works director, we are really focusing on um, sanitation, the garbage, um, because believe it or not, with everybody at home, um, the tonnage has increased drastically. And so that's to be expected because our commuter community would probably be having lunch and dinner um, on, in other places. And so um, bringing home that garbage or having that garbage at home, it's starting to you know really fill up um, the garbage trucks. And so we're just having to use all, all of our resources um, to make sure that we're keeping that up to date. We're having to make more trips to the landfill because we're filling up quicker. So um, we're, we're really struggling to get, to make sure that that is taken care of. And I don't wanna say struggle, but we put priority on that. So some of the projects, the concerns, potholes, um, some of the right of way cutting, those are less of a priority um, for us at this time. So we're, we're gonna get to them. That rotation may just take a little longer. And you know, we have to also please keep in mind that um, we are somewhat reduced in our workforce because we have either high risk people who are not able to work or we have people who are quarantined um, or a reallocation of some of our resources um, to other places. So, you know, I want people to be a little patient with us as you see maybe things that have been unaddressed. We're going to get to them. Um, we're just trying to prioritize the things that we have to do right now. Which makes total sense. Yeah. Can you give us an update from a parks and rec perspective. Um, I know that there are spring sports that people paid for that are not taking place now, unfortunately. So give us an update there. Yeah, so we had to um, cancel those sports and we are, um, we have formulated the total of refunds and we will be taking that to council at our next council meeting, asking for approval to give all of those refunds, which total almost $95,000. And so we're going to be refunding 100% of those registration fees, regardless of whether they practiced or got uniforms or anything like that. So. It'll take probably from the time the council formally acts on that approval to, to pay that, we will probably take us about 30 to 45 days to get everybody um, the checks and, and things like that. The credit cards would be a little bit quicker, that turnaround. So in, in talking about um, park and rec sports, we have football and cheer coming up. And so that registration usually starts in April. And so we're, we're talking to the league and um, kind of just getting a feel of how we alter those registration dates because we don't want to proceed expecting um, one thing to happen and then have to do this refund process all over again. So we're kind of um, just keeping an eye on things and making sure that we don't move ahead too quickly but we are having those discussions. So we'll be putting that out um, for those normal um, participants so that we'll keep them updated. 
Okay, so they can just stay tuned for that, but I think, I think that's a great idea because really until April 30th, there's just a lot that we don't know exactly. about what's going to happen. Yeah, and okay. it's changing daily. That's what's so interesting. Yeah. Okay, can you talk a little bit about um, city finances, revenue, things like that? What are some changes happening there? Well, you know, and I will say that it's, it's so comforting and it should be for our community our local businesses and our citizens how much the government is doing to help um, with this very unexpected and unprecedented um, challenge and so the state first announced that they were going to be waiving all the penalties for sales tax and um, gave cities options whether they wanted to or not it was up to the city well the city of alabaster has decided to mirror the um, state's method and we will be waiving all penalties for those sales and use tax payments because we know that you know there's going to be some time that people need to do priorities um, and we want to make sure that we're helping in any way that we can so we've sent that email out notifying all our businesses not only of what we're doing to try to help them but also of links to state and federal resources that can help them and we want them to just get as much assistance to help them through this tough time as they possibly can and you know i'm just really as I drive around the city, um, I'm just thrilled that our community is still supporting our restaurants through their curbside and drive through. So you wouldn't really know, um, probably except that there's no dining room options, but there's a lot of business still being supported by our community. And, and that's so important. And I thank everybody for doing that. Now, Mayor, how is our city doing? The last time we talked, we talked about the health order that was put into place, um, everything put into place by the governor and our curfew. We talked a little bit about that. How is it going over the last couple weeks? I, I'm so proud. I'm just so proud of our community. I mean, they truly, they are, they've just embraced it. And we don't see a lot of people you know, whining or moaning. Uh, if they are, they're, they're doing that quietly, but they are doing a really good job of complying. I just want to give a big shout out of appreciation um, to our community for doing that because it helps us. It helps our people in doing their jobs. And so um, Chief Love said that reports are that what we're doing seems to be helping. Um, the curve is definitely um, being flattened. So um, you know, we just, it's a long haul and I know it's, it's different and we don't know what our new normal is going to be like. <clears throat> so, you know, I just thank everybody for staying in there. But, you know, I think even more than complying with the health order, it's just so heartwarming to me and um, that our community has embraced helping others and it, it's just been a real group effort. There's no way that I could name all of the good that I see being done, but there are a couple that I just feel like I need to, to, to talk about because, you know, we have a fleet of vehicles for our public safety. And when they're not on staff, you know, those vehicles are parked. And so as we were hearing of this really bad storm, that was coming Easter, we were trying to figure out how we protect those vehicles um, from unnecessary damage. And Shelby was very kind to let us park a fleet of unused public safety vehicles in their parking deck to protect from the hail damage. And so that was just, that was nice of them to let us do that. We appreciate that. But also I mentioned earlier that our faith-based community has really been, um, calling and saying how can we help our our congregation and our people want to be very helpful to others and one that is near and dear to my heart is our senior citizens and i would just have to give a big shout out to cultivate church because they have um partnered with bertolonis um and bertolonis is donating hot meals for our seniors that's being delivered by cultivate church you know they're getting their frozen meals from the M4A that they normally do. But Cultivate Church partnered with Bertolonis to also deliver some hot meals. Um, so those frozen meals, you know, just to switch it up a little bit. But they're also going by 
pers buying prescriptions, getting their prescriptions, um, picking up things to keep those seniors from having to get out and be exposed. And so, you know, I just appreciate all of them. Those, that's just one I know about for sure. I'm sure there's more, but um, I can't thank them enough because I, I've really been worried about our seniors. And so that just makes me feel really good to know that um, they're being um, taken care of in a special way. It truly is heartwarming to see, even in the midst of all the uncertainty, to see everyone coming together, doing things for each other, and just slowing down the pace to look at somebody else and to see someone else and see what they're going through has been incredible. So, and also I really want us to touch on the people on the front lines here with a hospital being in our city, Shelby Baptist, we need to give a huge shout out to these doctors and nurses who are putting their lives and their families on the line to help others. Absolutely. And they are such a key source of information for us because that that is truly the way we measure, you know, what's going into the hospital and, and how we're being affected. And so um, Daniel Listy has been a great resource for me to get information and he's always so positive and upbeat and um he said that you know they're they have alternative care sites identified should we get to that we've not gotten there yet that our capacity is fine but knowing that they're prepared for a surge it really makes me feel good and i will tell you he's he is so um, just proud of his staff and how they are just persevering through this, even though they're exhausted. I am so thankful for those people who are willing to do that. And I don't think we realize, you know, exactly how scary it is for them every day. And so we have to pause and thank them for that. And just, um, cause without them, what would we do? Now I understand that the hospital has given us a way to show our appreciation to these doctors and nurses. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, Daniel Listy said that the outpouring of our from our community has just been unbelievable and he just he wants to thank everybody for all that they're doing for them and they've actually provided an email address if you want to sh send any type of encouragement or thank you it is an email address that they share with the staff individually but also on their social media and he he just wanted to make sure that everybody had that opportunity if they want to but he just said it's been unbelievable the outpouring of the community and, and that makes me proud too. I think it's just been a real community effort. So I feel really good and I, I'm really proud of our, our community. Mayor Marty, you are a breath of fresh air. We are so thankful for you for being our fearless leader and, and getting us through this COVID crisis for your updates and everything else. It's a crazy time, but we appreciate you bringing some positivity and some transparency to what's going on in the city, because I think that's really important to our citizens. So thank you very much. Well, it's kind of you to say that, but I will tell you, I'm truly nothing but the voice of the people, the hands and feet um, of our local government, because all of the people that work for the city, they are actually doing all this good stuff. And so I just get to kind of keep you informed of what they're doing, but they, I'm very proud to have them on my team. I'm, I'm proud that they care so much about the citizens of Alabaster and it just makes this job so much easier. Well, I am sure that I'll be talking to you again next week. I'm sure updates will come and, and at least until April 30th, until we kind of get a better picture, we're gonna be continuing to update you guys. Alabaster, thank you so much, Mayor Marty. Thank you, Nicole. You have a great day.